Hi guys, I'm EBM and welcome back to the channel. This is the Audi Turd. Damn it! This is the Audi e-tron. Now, in the comments section for the past few years, people have been telling me that as soon as the first proper manufacturer does an EV, we will then see some good electric cars. Well, in terms of resources and development, there's no one really bigger than Audi. So that should be a cracking car. Or not. Okay, let's have a quick look around before I take it out. You'll notice here on the front bumper that Audi have put e-tron on the front. That's so you can tell it from every other Audi on the market because let's face it, all they've done is photocopy the design and put an electric motor in it. It looks like every other Audi on the market. Standard SUV approach. That is the charge flap here and I want to come back to that. So I'll leave it for now. Uh, the rest of it is standard SUV looks. Nothing exciting, nothing uh, out of the ordinary. Not a bad looking car, it's standard Audi as I've just mentioned. Round the back, again, nothing really to report other than it's an SUV with an Audi badge on it. I'm not really sure what more I could say other than it's, um, uh, well, well yeah, it's an Audi. It's got, a, it's got an e-tron badge there, that, that's, that's interesting. Uh, the boot though, let's have a look at how big the boot is. If I can figure out how to open it, there we go. Automatic boot, quite large. But, as you know, I don't have a Harry with me today, so I need to find another sort of measuring metric. Uh, it takes about, I would say, one and a bit Simon in this one, and there is, uh, there's a bit more Simon than Harry, so... It needs to be bigger. <laughs> <laughs> if you've got a family, I think a one and a half Simon should be big enough, pretty much. Pretty good. Yeah. Quick look inside, under here, if I can figure out it, there we go. You've got all your charging cables and it's actually quite deep, it's very deep. So you could take all that out and you've got a bit more storage space. Now, the charging flap that I mentioned earlier, it is very cool and it's the first thing that nearly every other review mentions. But I have a theory and that is that Audi have a design team that designs all their cars, which is why they all look the same. But they got this new designer, he's really good, he's really exciting and he's called Bob. They give him this to design and look what it's created. I just wish they'd have given Bob the rest of the car to design because it's boring. Imagine if they'd have put the effort into the car that they put it into that. It'd be much, much better. This is the button to open the flap, which I've just shown you. And I'm not sure if you can pick it up on camera, but do you know when you get a, a mouse touchpad on a laptop and you get like a shiny bit in the middle? That's what that is already doing. And this car was delivered, I think, two weeks ago. So what's that gonna look like in a year or two? Let's have a look at the interior. Door first. Nothing special, just usual high quality Audi switch gear. The steering wheel is a work of art for me. It don't look amazing, but it, re it feels brilliant. It feels really, really nice. And this display is probably one of the best in its class. If I turn the car on, there we go. Now, this thing here is it's like watching a 4K TV. It really is beautiful. And you can change the display there. And that I really, really like. Moving into the centre, you've got the massive, I think it's 10 inch display for the sat nav, for the phone, all the usual stuff. And it's like a, it's like an iPhone. The harder you press on it, the more feedback it gives you. This bit down here, really easy to use. It's shaded from the windscreen, so you don't get that reflection that you do on, uh, on things like the iPace, for example. Now we get to here, this is where you engage drive, reverse, all the usual neutral stuff, and press that button there for park. It's a bit odd that until you look at this, move it forward, nice armrest. So that does actually make sense, that's why that's there. Lots of storage, cup holders, usual stuff. You've got 12 volt there. You have more storage back there under the armrest. Nothing special, nothing impressive, but again, immaculate build quality. These buttons here, nice to touch, but it fortunately does suffer from the usual stuff that all black gloss items like an iPad suffer from. I mean, this car, we are the first people to drive it. All I can see is all the fingerprints, yeah. the dust marks. I mean, it's black gloss, what do they expect? It's like a, a kitchen that's black gloss. It looks great in a brochure, but nowhere else. The materials used, first rate. I'm gonna do the usual test that annoys everyone. Yeah, look, <laughs> no scratchiness. This is what you're missing from, you know, cheaper cars basically, but this is, 
well, a 70, 80 gram car, you would expect this sort of material quality. Uh, there are a few which we'll bring up later that we want to highlight that isn't good. Uh, can the glove box fit gloves? Oh. Yep, you'll definitely fit some gloves in there. My hands are going, no problem. So that's, that's actually a decent sized glove box, actually, isn't it? It is. Bigger than normal. Obviously, you can't open it if there's someone sat in the passenger no, that's seat. That's right, annoying that. <laughs> that's what they call an afterthought. Back. Now, I'm not very big. I've got loads of space at the front, but this seat is. Uh, setting a position for myself. This seat is in the position you've just seen where his legs stopped the glue box opening. And you've got uh, not a lot. Not a lot of room. There's, a, there's enough, isn't there? But it's not. There's, uh, there's enough, but on a long journey, I think if I wanted to just have a little stretch out, I'm going to be compromised a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> there's going to be sweets, there's going to be wrappers, there's going to be all sorts of stuff in there. Sweet wrappers. <laughs> Good place for sweet wrappers for secret sweet eaters. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> yes. Before we take the car out, this is Simon, he's my brother. You, he's going to be uh, with us for the journey, as it were. But we've spotted a serious flaw in this, what is a luxury Audi, basically, and we're just about to show you it now. Right, let's show you how to get into the frunk. This is the serious problem we've just mentioned. You open this flimsy flap here, which is basically like out of a, well, a 1990s Fiesta to get under the bonnet. Now, before we open this, picture yourselves on a rainy night, the car's dirty, you know, you've been driving it for months or whatever, and it's basically like going under the bonnet. It's going to be very dirty. If you've got an 80 odd grand car of any type, you might be wearing a very expensive suit. Uh, so this is what Audi expect you to do. You've got to find the bonnet latch. There we go. And then it comes up. And you open this to get to your charging cables. I'm not sure how much you can see there because of the sun, but basically, imagine doing that in the rain, the, you come off a motorway, whatever, and all the front end is dirty, you're in an expensive suit, whatever. On any luxury car, that is ridiculous. And I can't understand why Audi have done it. I think it's a total afterthought. They've, they've designed the car and then thought, oh look, we've got some space underneath, let's put something in there. But there's no electronic release, you have to do that down there. Very flimsy, very poor effort. There's a few things on this car that are like that. Uh, we'll get to that once we go for a drive, which we're about to do now. Now, of course, that Audi driver has stopped this Audi driver from parking all the way to the spot, but this is as close as we want to realistically get. The car was going, beep, stop, stop, stop. And when we go to the front, we're still not in the space. So it's a big car, which should be obvious if you're watching this, but ultimately it's not exactly uh, car pack friendly, I suppose. Absolutely not. No. Oh, uh, it's a big car. We're going out of a tiny Rochester car park. Uh, uh, another BMW driver that doesn't know what, what he's are doing. You doing. And they told you to F off as well, so. <laughs> we, it, 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 it's like an understanding between Audi and BMW drivers. Yeah. I, do you know what I think it was? What he really did, disliked about you? You indicated. Ah, it's quite offensive, I'm assuming. I think so. You, no. You're highlighting what he doesn't have. He just has hand signals. Yeah, he, he was telling you, I'm going that way, <laughs> that way. So this has a 95 kilowatt hour battery. Okay. 83, four ish of usable battery. Yet in the real world, and we've driven this enough to confirm this definitely, you're doing about 210 miles on a full charge. For 80, I'll call it 84 kilowatt hour battery. To put that in context, an e Nero or a Kona will do about 250 miles under that same driving condition, so another 40 miles more, but with only a 64 kilowatt hour battery. How, with the resources and money and development potential that Audi has, have they managed to produce a car so inefficient? I think I can explain it. See, I'm thinking the batteries weigh it down. In real terms, they haven't allowed for the massive cock that's going to be driving it as well. <laughs> Now, obviously, like any new car, you have to get used to the infotainment and sat-nav system, but I find this a bit... Numb. Numb, yeah. It's not bad, it's just... I don't know, it's like they're trying to be too clever. And these seats aren't supportive in the slightest when you go around a corner. No. I don't know if it's because they're comfort seats instead of sport ones, but these bolsters barely stick out. They're basically designed for Americans, because I'm like this. Oh, you're, you're a little I'm bit, a little bit broader. There's a little bit more of you than me. Is it, is it, what's it like for yourself? 
That's twice today. <laughs> um, yeah, it could do with a little bit. What I'd like is something that you could actually adjust. So you've got the bolsters at the side. That yeah, you these can't move, do they? You can adjust a lot of it, but not these. Yeah, so that it, you know, if you need a little bit more padding because you haven't got as much of your own, then yeah. <laughs> so what you're saying is, if you're a bloke and you've got a fat back, yeah, or a woman. Careful, back, careful now with back breast. <laughs> this is why it's not on another video. <laughs> a woman with back breasts. Back breasts. <laughs> we found the car. We tried to get in about three different Audis before we found our particular a black Audi. Uh, so uh, yeah. nondescript is a good good phrase for this thing. That is really annoying me now. The, the, the sun glare. glare off that silver bezel. I'm going to have to put my sunglasses on. It's too, it's literally blinding me. So this is a fantastic interior. It's a comfortable car. It's uh, practical. Yep. We should be saying nothing but good things. But have you noticed, it, it's almost been flipped around. We're saying almost the opposite. We're picking up on some things that shouldn't have happened at all, something that, that shouldn't occur. And is that what we're kind of highlighting? It's putting us off the car, just a few small things. Because if you're spending yeah. 80 odd thousand pounds or what, you know, start at 75 and uh, go up to 100 if you spec everything, everything should be sorted, shouldn't it? It should be I think just for me, so. Yeah, for me, uh, you look around the cockpit, you look at everything, and the displays are fantastic, everything's fantastic, and there's just niggly little bits and pieces that you look at and you think, why? Who banged their head on the way to yeah. work when they were designing that? It's so easily fixed, isn't it? I mean, the, the bonnet catch thingy that's ridiculous, yeah. which we, uh, we should have already shown you by now. And uh, this bit here, down, down here by the door. I mean, I can hardly get my hand there. It's very cheap, and we were talking like Fiesta from 2000 sort of level cheap. Mark II Fiesta. Mark II Fiesta then, <laughs> no, even, even older than that. And no doubt someone will say, well, how often do you put your hand down there? It shouldn't matter on a car. Of this, that it's a luxury car. Absolutely. Everything should be just so. Not, well, if you don't see it, we'll get away with it. It looks really good. The attention to detail. Absolutely. And then you've got something that they think, ah, nobody's going to see it. It's all right. <laughs> it's out the way. Well, actually, the boot catch for me, you're going to see that at least twice a week, three times a week, maybe every other day. Because maybe that's every you day. Or you're just going to never use it and put your charge cables in the boot. I don't the know. apprentice do the same. The apprentice has done that, yeah. yeah. It's like someone uh, doing a, a masterpiece, a Picasso painting, and then signing it with a felt pen yeah. afterwards. It's so infuriatingly easy to fix. It's comfortable, it's quick enough. Yeah. Uh, and I think on a long journey, it'd be beautiful. It'd be very nice. Apart from the range, really of course. Nice. So how do we sum this car up? It's like flawed perfection. Good way of putting it, I suppose. Or laziness. Yeah, because it, it's it's standard out, isn't it? Yeah. Immaculate for most things. Yeah. But um, as an electric car, it's inefficient. It's expensive. Yeah. So is this a a good car, but a bad electric car? When you look at the competition. Yes. From lesser models, lesser from makers. lesser models, or even direct competitors, Tesla, Jaguar I Pace. The Mercedes EQC. Yeah. If you're bothered about cars, I don't think you'd like this as much as them. No. If you just want a car to go and pick little Johnny up from your school, you'll love it. If you're buying this because it's a luxury car, then the luxury has been worn away or eroded by simple mistakes. Yep. That shouldn't be there. Yeah, yeah. There are. It's not a case of it puts you off buying it. It makes the competitors much more palatable yeah you, you, you prefer them because they don't make stupid mistakes part of me is thinking if they've done something such a schoolboy error on these few things have they cut any corners elsewhere what can't you see yeah what can't you see like is that why it's so efficient or rather inefficient, inefficient. it's a, it's really inefficient EV it's, it's beyond gas guzzling equivalent of an EV and is that because they've rushed that as much as they have with the bits we've picked up on yeah. and that's that's what's bugging me here you often pay for cars like this on what you can't see. The development of the, the engine, the engineering behind it. So, you're buying a special car 
that looks like everything else, is way more inefficient than anything else, yeah. uh, EV-wise, and doesn't have a unique selling point. The interior of a Tesla is nothing compared. This is way better than a Tesla interior. Yeah. But you've got the Tesla supercharger network, you've got the autopilot, unique selling points. This has no unique selling points. It's basically an Audi that happens to be electric. When, when, when we tested a, a Model S, for example, I thought this is a fantastic car, the autopilot's brilliant, the supercharger network's brilliant, but the interior was for a 90 or thousand power, shocking, quite frankly. Yeah. But I thought, you know what, I could put up with that interior because I've got autopilot, because I've got the supercharger network. And on this car, I go, you know what, I can put up with that and that because actually, no, I can't. No, because there's nothing else encouraging me. <laughs> there's no compromise there. No. You're getting something and you're taking your way with something. It's just... It's boring. If they're the only two niggles I've got, which is the bonnet and the side of the seat, but I can't get them out of my head because the rest of the car hasn't impressed me that much and the battery life hasn't impressed me that much and the power and everything else, yep. I'm thinking, well, why am I sat in 80 grand's worth of nearly? Right, well, uh, we'll sign off now. Thanks for watching as usual. Uh, I'm on Twitter, EVMANUK. Uh, thanks for watching. Thank you.